I'll tell you another story that I think illustrates this problem. This is Chris Avenir. Uh, he was an 18-year-old. Because he's 18, right, he's grown up in this environment. By the time he was five, the internet was public. By the time he was 10, the public web was well on the way to being built out. By the time he was 15, MySpace, Friendster, Facebook had all launched. And before he was 20, he goes to college. And this spring, up at Ryerson College in Canada, where he's a student, uh, he enrolls in the chemistry class. And like students since time immemorial, he says, well, this is hard, and I'm going to work for the test, and so I'll start a study group. But because he's 18, he starts the study group on Facebook. He calls it the Dungeon Slash, the Ryerson, community, Ryerson College Chemistry Study Group. And it goes pretty well. Right? He gets 146 of his classmates to join his study group. They're all sitting there talking about chemistry. And suddenly, he's called up on charges. Right? And they threaten to expel him. How many charges? 147 charges. One for setting up a Facebook group, and one for each of his fellow students who joined. Right? Ryerson College says, this is cheating, straight up. Um, here's their point of view. Right? Their statement says, Facebook is media. We're treating this as publishing. And once you're operating in a mediated environment, it's immaterial to us how this works. Right? Here's Avenir's reaction. Right? He wasn't hiding anything. He did this on Facebook. He named the, the study group The Dungeon because that's the name of the room on the Ryerson campus where the real study groups meet. Right? So he thought, right, Facebook is just an extension of group life, and I'm just extending it into this other meeting. So what had, what had Avenir done to freak Ryerson out so much? And what he'd done is he crashed two different kinds of information flow into one another. Right? Every college has two different messages, an inside message and an outside message. The inside message is, welcome to the community of scholars. We're glad you're here. Come join us. We're having a conversation. The best kind of class to be in is small seminars where you can discuss things with your peers. Right? It's very much about community, about conversation, about joining the group. And then to the outside world, they say, we do quality control of individual minds. Right? We pack them with education, and we've got enough education stuffed in. We slap a diploma on them and ship them to you. Right? And the thing that keeps these two modes from colliding is just that in the real world is a hassle. Right? It's a hassle to get groups together. It's a hassle to, to coordinate times to meet. And so the real world stuff stays pretty much bounded by the walls of the campus. Right? And so those two messages are just separated. And what Avenir did by moving this thing to Facebook, is he caused those two messages to collide. And then we have the clash of metaphors, right? Ryerson College says Facebook is like media. Avenir says Facebook is it's just an extension of the real world. And we're caught in this kind of either or choice, a little bit like the public or private choice around privacy. But the problem is that if you have to make that choice, you're going to make the wrong choice. You know what Facebook is like? It's not like a fax machine or a mimeograph, and it's not like a meeting in the basement of Ryerson College. Facebook turns out to be a lot like Facebook, right? That there is no metaphor that can be picked up and slapped onto it that will tell us what to do about it. Facebook is different than what's gone before. In fact, if it wasn't, it wouldn't get any users. Facebook is only worth spending time on because of that difference. And so there is no simple solution to this problem, right? Avenir obviously has a point. He's been invited into an environment where group conversation is the norm. He thought he was doing the right thing. But for all of Ryerson's terrible overreaction, they have a point too, right? Because even though there are study groups that meet in the real world dungeon on the Ryerson campus, none of those tables seat 146, right? If you have a small study group, half a dozen people, and somebody comes in and says, you know what, I'm really just here to, to mooch off you guys. I just want to know the answers to the chemistry test, and I'm not going to participate. You get kicked out. Right? Small groups defend themselves against free riders. Large groups don't. Right? What the internet does right, is allows large systems that are free rider tolerant rather than free rider resistant. Right? There's 146 people in the Facebook group. Right? Then somebody 
right? Somebody is free riding. And so it isn't about information, access to information. There's more information out there, right? We've known the formula for hydrochloric acid for some time now, right? We're not asking the students to figure it out because we need to know it. We're asking the students to figure it out because we need them to have experience figuring things out. And this is, I think, exemplary of the filter failure issue. When you see the Ryerson College Chris Avenir fight, not as a fight over information or access to information, but rather a fight over flows and access to flows, right, it suddenly becomes clear that what we're dealing with is not, oh, well, we can go back and put, put the filter at the source the way we've always done in the past. It really is about rethinking the institutional model. You have to have group conversation. You have to have individual effort. You have to design a system that accommodates both, right? And we're breaking the system we've got. Part of the reason I think information overload presents itself as such a consistent problem is that we don't have the obvious tools to pick up in the current environment. Using a metaphor of media, using a metaphor of real space, each of those illuminates part of the current landscape, but not enough we're really pitched forward into a kind of new challenge. Yeah. Now, this isn't a design problem. I don't think anybody can go out and start coding up the college of the future tomorrow. Right? This is more of a mental shift. Right? It's a way of seeing the world that assumes that we are to information overload as fishes are to water. It's just what we swim in. Uh, Itzhak Rabin, a man who would know, once said, if you have the same problem, for a long time, maybe it's not a problem. Maybe it's a fact. Right. 